Today is a day that we are going to tackle circles or spheres. So if you would turn with me to page 20 in your sketchbook, and I will get set up. Today what you are going to need is, you are going to need to be able to draw a really good circle. So if you have in your cupboard at home a soup can or possibly something a little bit larger circle, that will work awesome today. You might have a template that you can trace a circle that also works well too. Your first direction to get set up is I would like you to do two circles and one circle. So follow what I do. There's one. I'm going to slide it over. I don't want it touching. They're not going to be related items. One there, one there, and then I would like you to draw one at the bottom here. Going right along with circles today, we're also going to talk about an art word that is texture. And I put the definition in here for you. It is the appearance and feel of the surface of an object. Now, right now, we know that if we touch our sketchbook, it's smooth. If we touch the desk, it's smooth. And there is visual texture, and there is tactile texture. Tactile texture is when you truly can touch, as in tactile. So this piece of cardboard is tactile texture. This piece of sandpaper is rough texture. And smooth is also a texture. In art, we want to learn how to give the appearance that a surface has texture. So I'm going to show you some different things you can do. First of all, I'm going to show you how to fill these three boxes with three different kinds of texture. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper underneath here. And I'm just simply going to lay my sandpaper here. And I'm going to render with my pencil. And it's a pretty smooth sandpaper. In fact, I might even, I might even try. I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to try a piece of sandpaper that's rougher that might give me a, a little bit better visual of texture. And again, I'm going to rub. And you can see here a slight bumpiness of a texture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take something different and I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and the piece of cardboard I'm going to lay under here and I'm going to take my pencil and I'm simply going to do a rub like this. And you might be able to see those ridges the rows of ridges. There's another sort of texture. Another thing you could do is just with your pencil lead, you could take it here and do some dots. And you will learn that in during, during doing certain lifelike objects that these dots can reflect also a texture. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go around your house. Maybe you have a textured wall. You can do a rub. Maybe you have a brick. You could do a rub. Maybe there's something that has a tactile texture 
that you could do a rub with. Three different rubs. Again, this one was sandpaper, this one was corrugated cardboard, and this one was simply dots. Okay, to get started today, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to take your straight edge and I, I want to begin with just putting, and you can, if, you're, if your circles are fairly lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and put a wall line. So a wall and a floor line. I'm just gonna put that in right now on my top two circles. Again, these are gonna be two different objects. We are going to begin the shading process. This is probably the most important thing about shading a circle. And that is that you go in the direction of your object. So since it's a circular object, you're going to go in a curved sort of motion. I don't mean circ, well, I don't mean um, circle, little circles all inside, but I mean go with the outer edges of your object. It will really help your shading. So again, we've done tons of shading up to this point. I'm gonna take my softest lead, which is my 6B. I'm going to lay some lead down. I'm rendering because I do not want lines. I don't want harsh lines. And what I should have established is my light. I'm going to say my light's coming from here. I probably should have done that before I started to lay the lead down. So notice I'm going to release the pressure a little bit. And now since this is a large area, I'm going to take paper towel. Instead of my blender stick, I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and I am now going to do a rub. And I'm also gonna go in a circular sort of motion. So that fills the circle in. Now you probably can notice that I've got scratchy lines here. So what do I do to get rid of those scratchy lines? I'm going to take my eraser, and with my eraser, I am going to slightly erase, keeping those shavings on, because we've learned now that those, those eraser shavings really help blend edges. They help transition. So you, when I'm done this, I will show you. Sometimes you'll find that if your eraser gets too much lead, it just slides around. So you might have to clean that up. Again, if you have a piece of sandpaper, that works really well for cleaning up erasers and cleaning up blending sticks. All right. Not sure if you can notice these little shavings, but I don't want to wisp them off. What I'm going to do now also is, while I'm at it, I'm going to add some more lead at the, the dark spots. And I'm going to go right over my um, eraser shavings. And again, those shavings really help transition in a nice, subtle, smooth way. Going to take my paper towel. My, my shavings are still on there. Notice how the paper towel and the eraser shavings blend together and help transition from a light to a middle to a darker. Now you can keep working on this and you can put more dark. And again, the rendering method avoids lines. And the other thing I'm going to do is, I notice my light touches here, and it is lighter, but maybe you want to give it a little bit more light. 
you can actually erase. Take a clean part of your paper towel. Start on your light and just work down. And by making sure that you go in the direction of your object, you're going to help the visual look of this. Blow off the shavings that I no longer want. And then take and sharpen up your edges by erasing. So at this point, I'm cleaning up my because it's really dirty to get easy to get it dirty. Again, this is a good place to use the uh, mechanical drawing eraser. I erased a little bit of my, my shade. I just want to put it back in to round out this round shape. Biggest thing is the transitions. You want gradual transitions. Now, we're going to quickly make this into an object. So what we're going to do here is I am going to do one, two, three ovals. In the bottom of my oval, I'm just going to add a little shade. Great place to use your blender stick. And now you notice you've just drawn a bowling ball. Now, to give this bowling ball the appearance that it's sitting on the ground, and this is the wall, we need to do some shading. Since this is a circular object, and it's resting on the ground, my shading is going to be an oval shading. And we already have learned that it's going to be nice and dark. Again, that 6B pencil works really well. I'm going to melt the lead together. I may have And now it appears that the bowling ball is resting on the ground. Okay, now for my second object. Again, this is also a circle. Really important that we go in the direction of our object. But the other thing is, don't be afraid to move Move your sketchbook for your hand. I know sometimes hitting the spine can be a little bit annoying. So what I'm going to do on this one now is I'm going to make my light come directly here. So to do that, I've got to add some shading. And again, I'm going to lay some lead down. Nothing real magical about this, except for that it's really important that you shade with your object. Okay, because my light is coming this direction.
And now I'm going to do a rub. And I'm going to rub also in a circular direction. Now, you may notice that looks like all a pretty middle shade. It truly does. So how do I give it the appearance of a realistic shading with the light source coming here? I'm going to take my eraser. And not only am I going to take my eraser, I'm also going to take my 6B. I'm, I'm going to add some, some dark shade at the bottom. Notice I did not blend my shavings, or I didn't wisp bump my shavings. And right now, this is what I would call not a good transition. It looks more like a line there. So again, going to take paper towel, gonna blend. And you can simply keep working it until you get it looking as good as you can. So for me, I need to put some more dark in. Again, got a big line going. I need some of those shavings in here. And I'm going to rub. Seems like every time I rub, I kind of get rid of my white area. And probably need to put the eraser in there again. Now, after you've shaded, 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 manipulated the lead, manipulated the shavings, we are going to make this into a rubber ball to give it the appearance it's bouncing. Extremely easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to drop underneath my circle and I'm going to do an oval. Take a little bit of a step back and look, and now you see one that's resting on the ground, and now you get the appearance of one that's bouncing above the ground. On this one, what I didn't do is I didn't clean up my edges. I probably should have before I put the, the shadow. Keeping in mind that neatness is a part of good artwork and your craftsmanship. Okay, so both of these objects, I would say, have pretty smooth textures. We're going to move to something now where I'm going to show you how to use your pencil to give texture. So, on this object, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to cut the top off. So right here, and just kind of pick a space. I'm gonna pick a space like this. And I'm gonna cut the top off.
Now what I'm going to do is as we do in a cylinder, I'm going to measure the distance from here to here. So I'm going to eyeball the top of the circle there, which is about here. I'm going to measure, mark it. Now I'm going to come down here, lay it on the line, wherever my mark is, right here. So now what I'd like you to do is come in here, just like a cylinder, an ever so gentle smile. Here you have, so the distance here should be a similar distance as is here. So now what I would like you to do is I would like you to take this, the width of this line. So again, I'm just going to lay my straight edge corner here. Mark about how long that little line is. And I would like you to down here, down here, draw a line that long. Now, this shape here, that might look like an eye to you. Um, it may look like a pointed football to you. But what I'd like you to do is put that shape right here. How do I do it? First of all, we're going to determine where the center of the line is. It looks about there. Again, the measurement from here to here which I did like this. I'm now going to take that measurement, go to the center of the line, draw there, drop it under the line, draw there. I'm back to drawing a cylinder. So I've got my gentle frown, kind of, I've got my gentle smile, like this. Round the corners, soften the corners a little bit. So I'm going to take that sharp point off. And now I'm going to erase the interior lines. Again, this is a good place for your mechanical drawing pencil. Put them over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the light because we're going to shade it. So in shading this, it's a circular object, so and the light is coming this direction. I'm going to take my 6B pencil, circular, and I'm going to go in the direction of my object. So you notice because this is laying on top of this, I act as though it goes around. So I'm now going to take that paper towel And I am going to do a rub. I'm also going to rub in here. And I'm also going to rub in here. So I'm not satisfied yet with this, the shading. It doesn't look that great yet. I want to make sure that I, I'm going to move my book around because it just works better with my hand. By this time, I know the light's coming from this direction.
skin. I'm going to rub. And now what I want you to do is realize that this is going to be an orange with the top cut off and the top is laying against the actual orange. So to show texture, since we know light is coming from this direction, I'm going to shade the direction of this top like this. Great place to use your blender stick because it's small. I definitely want to put some light here because this is where the light is touching. And to add some orange peel texture on the lid of the orange that we took from here, and we're tipping it here, I'm now going to just put with pencil some dots. And we're going to give it the appearance of an orange peel texture. What I'm also going to do in the body of my orange, I'm going to put texture. And you're going to texture right over your shading because it will be subtle and it will be showable. So I've got some texture on my orange. Now I'm going to go ahead and we need to draw the interior of our orange. So to draw the interior of our orange, we need to make our slices. So to make our slices, we're going to leave this line here. And now right appearing in the middle, we're going to divide it. So divide like that. And then we're going to divide... there and we're going to divide here now to give it the appearance of an orange inside of an orange I'm going to separate my little orange slices and you and I'm just using little dots and this is what would, we would call adding detail. And instead of drawing a harsh line, I am dotting a line. And I'm dotting the line in every triangle. And they're not perfect lines. And I am going to enlarge it so you can show, or so that I can show you, is these are just triangular dots inside the triangular to give the appearance of little orange slices inside the lid of the orange. And then what I might also want to do, since I know that the light is coming from this direction, I may want to just erase out a little bit of lead, not much, but just a little bit of lead out of the orange section. And now we're going to put a... We're going to have it laying on a counter. So to have it laying on a counter, I want to make sure my counter 
is above the lid. And I notice what I also did not do is I did not clean up my edges, which I should. So in adding the counter line, I'm going to go above my orange. I'm going to go up here. So I've added that, my counter and my wall. And because these are circular sort of items, I'm going to add the shadow of them on the counter. And it becomes an oval. And I'm also going to put a shade right here as well. And you now have the lifelike object. Well, you actually have three lifelike objects. You've got the orange with the slice lid. You have the ball bouncing. And you have the bowling ball. Hopefully you've been able to capture some textures. And your <laughs> drawing should end up similar to this. The one thing you'll notice that I have written is that the shadow will give the viewer the impression of the object sitting or bouncing. So here is sitting, here is bouncing. How you get the difference is where you put the shadow. You'll also notice I wrote on here that you want gradual transitions between lights, middles, and dark shades.